Speaking of Messi, um, Messi has a, a Saudi tourism deal believed to be up to about $25 million over, over, over three years. But listen to the terms of this deal. <laughs> the, the deal includes 10 promotional social media posts per year, an annual family vacation with expenses covered for Messi and up to 20 family members and friends, charitable appearances and participation in Saudi Arabia's annual tourism campaign. This is the one that I found interesting. A condition in the contract states that Messi cannot say anything that might tarnish Saudi Arabia's image, a country known for human rights. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, uh, it, it, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's their morals clause, right? You can't just, say anything I'm bad about it. At, I'm just laughing about <laughs> Well... You know, look, as if you uh, as if you put that in a contract, that's I think mean, that's a that's that is a no brainer. I mean, if somebody's paying that sort of money, I can't see him t- turning around and saying that. But yeah, but uh, you know, look, it's sometimes you know contracts are meant, and and somewhere there's a lawyer that said put that in there. Uh, you know, I don't care wow. who it is, put it in there. If we're paying anybody money to represent us, you know, the last thing it can do is talk shit about us. Uh, gives us a ch- you know an out, but uh, I, I will I will be very interested to see if uh, we don't see a uh, uh, an inter Miami jaunt over to uh, Saudi to maybe play a couple games, you know, as part of a, a little uh, Saudi tour uh, with Messi, you know, yeah. embra- oh. you know, embracing with the uh, you know you know the tour the tourism and and you kind of get a. You, you kind of get Bex on there too, you know. Um, Bex, uh, Bex isn't afraid to take a few marketing bucks. So uh, Beckham, Beckham will milk this Saudi run in football, <laughs> and and anybody who's got half a brain can see it coming. Speaking yeah. of Saudi, this one, this this week is really interesting. Actually, it gets better and better. Yeah. So last well last season this year, Todd Bowley took over. Chelsea, they bought it after Abra- Abrahamovic was sanctioned. So right. on the whole saga. See you later. Four point two billion. Bowley comes in. Chelsea's going all right. Then he goes on a spending spree. He signed like eleven players, like non-stop signing. Bang, 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 bang. Weird. Everyone was shocked, gobsmacked. He's signing players on seven-year deals, eight-year deals, nine, ten-year deals. Just come, doesn't matter. I'll pay you in, in uh, installments. I'll give you whatever you want, but over time. Then the off-season comes. He starts selling off all his players. And where are they going? Going to Saudi. They're going. <laughs> it's a salary dump. Salary dump country. He's going into the Saudi Pro League. Hang on a second. He's known to have ties or relationships with the Saudis in the past, apparently. This is what they're, they're alleging. Yeah. And and now rivals are saying, hang on, come here for a second, mate. We aren't, we aren't blind. We, we, we know you're wealthy, but it's not a coincidence that you've done what you've just done. And they're asking for live investigations by, uh, by UEFA in regards to fair play and Financial fair play and so on and so on and so on. <laughs> what an absolute interesting situation! It'd be it'd be one thing if if all that if the spending spree had resulted in you know this massive boost and fantastic run and then you know so he got all the way up to Champions League and said all right now I'm gonna sell these guys off, but he bought all these players. They they dropped in the standings, fell out of Europa, even. They really struggled, uh, and really struggled. You know, were you know rudderless at the manager, you know, seat because they just it was a revolving door. You know, and uh, you know it's almost like he's just he's looking for a do over, and the only only one man's trash is another man's treasure, so to speak. And you know the the, the Saudi league is 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 looking to improve the quality of their play too. Obviously, you know, getting Ronaldo to go there looks like Ramos may end up heading over there. Um, and, uh, or not Ramos, but uh, Benzema. 
uh, Eddie over there. He um, signed, yeah. Yeah. So, so you've got, um, you know, the, you know, Mendy, Z H, uh, uh, is it Kualobi? I think his, his name is. Yeah. I mean, and, you, you've and got, one more. You've got, you've got quality else. players, you know, that in look, the, uh, the players that were signed by Chelsea, you know, didn't forget how to play the game, so to speak. Just, you know, sometimes it's it's system, it's culture, it's, um, you know, coaching, it's chemistry. Lots of things factor into the success of a team. Takes um, time. Yeah. Takes time. And you can't, you know, we, we've we've seen, you know, teams, you know, get, you know, players try to go somewhere and, you know, the Lakers try to do this when, you know, they bring in Carl Malone, they bring, you know, they try, they would try to build some other people around Kobe that were all, great at one point but collectively together that it didn't work and and i think it's one of those things where you couldn't buy the culture or the cohesiveness that you know that that was obviously in clubs like arsenal and in clubs like uh uh you know manchester city and uh, and the like um i mean you you probably have more culture and camaraderie in in you know in the leagues in the in the teams that are coming up from uh, the championship so to speak you know, because yeah. they've been fighting like hell together to get there. And, you Luton, know, none Luton of them. Town. Yeah, Luton Town, you know, you know, Burnley, Sheffield United, all fought like hell to get there. You know, Luton Town with the greatest run and story of, of, of those of those three. But, you know, when, you know, Chelsea has had a story, you know, has had a history, has had success, has won the league, has won Champions League, has, has, has won at the highest level. And has and and Bowley has the checkbook to go sign people, but you know it's it's one of those things you can't sign five point guards and go all right who's who's getting rebounds, you know somebody's got somebody's got to go do the dirty work, and you can't you can't sign a bunch of players that aren't willing to do dirty work. They all want to be scorers. They all want to be you know defenders or or or, or the like. And you need guys that just want to go out there and get stuck in for for ninety minutes, and you know. They just you know, his 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 sporting director or whoever it was wasn't doing a very good job of looking at what they had and what they were buying and did it did that round peg fit in a round hole or did, were we trying to you know solder this guy down and fit him into a, a place that doesn't work but uh, so you know you, you you see a lot of that and so part of this is a sell off part of this is a you know I need to reset and and Saudi is looking for talented. Uh, name name players to you know to, to bring recognition. You know, we talked about it before. We're wait we're we're kind of waiting to see who's going to pick up Saudi uh, you know TV rights globally because eventually you know you, you have a Benzema, you have a, a Ronaldo, you start getting some of these other players. I mean the quality of the plays is going to get better. I mean MLS quality of the play is going to get better because Messi's here. It's, it's going it's just going to happen. You know, so and and Apple's on the front end of that deal. They 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 got in before that deal was announced. Imagine the price had they uh, come in after. Um, but they are, you know, I mean, so it it is interesting. I mean, you, you need to investigate. Certainly, got to make sure all that. And we talked about that with some of the other, uh, you know, the sponsorship around some of the other teams that are uh, you know owned by you know Middle East owners, and all of a sudden they're getting massive deals. For, for sleeves, you know, from Saudi Arabian companies, you know, or Middle Eastern companies that wouldn't spend anywhere else, um, uh, but uh, they'll, they're all of a sudden they, you know, they've got no business in England, but they're going to put their name on some of the bi- biggest pieces of inventory that uh, the EPL has to offer. Um, so it, it it's quite interesting. We chuckle a little bit about it, but it's it's what makes this game, it, this business tick, is is uh, you know that type of activity. Because even 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 when the Premier League's not playing, you're talking about it, you know. Oh, for sure. I mean, it's and it's and it's impacting the world. It's impacting what's going on in other leagues. Um, so uh, you know, it's a uh, it'll be interesting to kind of see where this thing settles out. And and, and more importantly, you know, Chelsea, are you going to get your shit together and get back? I mean, there's there's there is a you know, there, there's a lot of people that just sat there and was like, what the hell just happened to that group? I mean, 
not like guys picked up and left, free agents left and guys wanted out. You basically had, you know, you know, hope what what many thought would be a positive change. You know, given uh, you know, you know, American ownership coming in, someone that that uh, that had capital that so, di- didn't have the, uh, the stigmatisms that uh, that Abramovich carried with him. You know, being a Russian owner, et cetera. And it just and it blew up. I mean, money didn't buy you happiness, so to speak. And uh, you know, now uh, you, you you saw other clubs rise. You saw you saw some clubs fall. Um, they uh, they have work to do. They, there are expectations there that need to be met, and they were not clearly not met. Two clubs fell out, which was Chelsea and Liverpool, replaced by Manchester United and Newcastle. Another. Another Saudi investment, but yeah. one, one one of the things that really raised the alarm bells was Ruben Neves from Wolves had Liverpool after him, and he said no, he's going to he wants to go to to the Saudi league. He's like in his mid twenties; he's in the peak of his of his career. So that really got people talking and really triggered all of this. So interesting to see how things play out. We'll yeah, definitely look, follow it and see yeah, how how things come around. Like I said, I don't I don't know about you, but if I'm in my mid twenties and I get offered the money that the Saudi league's offering a player of that stature, of that quality coming from the EPL, it's, it's generational wealth. Hard, oh. hard not to, you know, you know, hard not to go over there and just dominate and go. I'll play for my country and you know on the international level and, and, you know, do I want to live in, do I want to live in Newcastle? Do I want to live in Liverpool or do I want to live in Riyadh and, and mansion. live like a king? Yeah. Yeah. Some mansion in Riyadh or some mansion, in, uh, you know, somewhere in Saudi. Interesting. All right. Well, uh, let's see how that pans out, but that's, that's a really interesting s- situation that's currently unfolding as we speak, actually. Fantastic. I look forward to it. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Th- thank you all that tune into our podcast, the audio version, of course. And once again, we'll catch you all next week. Take care, everyone. See you all later. right. Take, take care.